Hey, welcome to another video in our Farm Your Yard series. I'm Carrie, and today we're here at Columbia's Agriculture Park in our greenhouse, and we're gonna talk about how to brew and use your own worm composting tea. So in today's video, we're gonna go over why you use worm tea and how to brew it. We're going to talk about CCUA's worm tea recipe, and we're gonna talk about how to use the worm tea. So let's get started. So first we're gonna talk about what is worm tea. Well, I've got some bubbling right here to my right, um, and it's just finished worm compost, which I've got right here, um, soaking in a solution that we'll talk about a little bit later. As sustainable gardeners, our whole goal is to increase the ecological diversity of the soil ecosystem. Those are the things that your plants rely on to be happy and healthy. So plants can't take the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potassium, all the other micronutrients out of the soil without the help of the little organisms that live in and you know throughout the soil. And what's so great about worm castings is that they are very biologically rich. Other microbes eat those worm castings, so it's also attracting other life forms. All of these life forms make an environment that your plants really love. Using worm tea, you're really just boosting that microbial activity in your soil um, so that you can make happy vegetable plants that produce nice, abundant food crops for you. So what is the difference between worm tea and something called leachate? Well, leachate is the water and the moisture that leaches through a worm compost bin. And you know, there is some microbial activity to it, but it's generally what's called anaerobic, so there's not oxygen, like you see here, bubbling, uh, and that's what the microbes need. And it's just kind of like wastewater. Honestly, it's a sign that your bin is too wet, and worms don't really like too wet systems. So leachate is suitable for using on ornamentals outside or in houseplants in diluted form, but it doesn't have the microbial boost that worm tea does, and I would not recommend using it on your food crops. Worm tea, by comparison, is something that you create with the finished worm castings, and your whole point of creating the worm tea is to boost the populations of those microbes. So what I'm doing right here is I'm taking, uh, you know, taking the original population of the microbes that were found in this amount of finished worm castings and feeding them some things and putting them in this very specific environment that we'll talk about later to boost those populations so that we increase the amount of biological activity with a small amount of starter product so that uh, that microbial activity can go farther in your garden. So let's talk about the materials that you will need to make your own aerated worm compost tea. So I've got a gallon jar right here, just reused, uh, and it's filled almost all the way to the top with filtered water. Uh, you can also use rainwater, but it's really important not to use tap water because there's chemicals put in tap water that make it safe for us to drink, but those chemicals kill biological activity. The whole purpose of this exercise is to promote biological life. Also, you will need finished worm compost. So this is mostly finished. There's still some, you know, grit and stuff in here, but it's fine. We also have unsulfured molasses. You don't need to use molasses, but if you do use molasses, make sure it's unsulfured. Uh, you can use any simple sugar. And then we also have our aerator. You can pick this up at a pet store. It's just a porous rock, air bubbles go through it. And then some sort of fabric to hold the compost together when it's in the jar of water. The other things that I have here that you don't like absolutely need, but that I use sometimes when I make worm tea is I have a kitchen scale, a little measuring spoon, a stirrer, which is actually a chopstick. So you just make do with what you've got to stir it. And those are really the materials you need. So now I'm gonna share with you CCUA's worm compost tea recipe. So we've got our gallon of water right here. To the gallon of water, we're gonna add about a quarter of a pound of worm castings. And you know, you're not like baking a cake, so there's not a lot of like serious chemistry involved here. So if you don't have a kitchen scale and don't want to invest in one, it's totally fine. Just a small handful of worm castings would be enough. So then I'm just gonna fold up the sides of my handkerchief that I use, and I have this little packet of finished worm compost in my little, my little like cotton 
swatch. Here's a rubber band. Uh, you can use twine or really whatever you want to, you know, tie it together. So then I'm just going to tie the little pouch together with my rubber band. And now I've got my little, this is like my little worm tea bag. So I'm going to set this aside for one second, but we'll come back to it. So we got a lot of good things living in here. Uh, we want to feed them. So we're going to feed them the sugar. So then I'm going to get my measuring spoon. This is a tablespoon and we're going to use about half of a tablespoon of unsulfured molasses in this gallon of water. And now I'm going to kind of stir the molasses into the jar of water. If the jar is not like warm, it, it's going to have a hard time kind of dissolving into the water, which is why I have my little stir stick right here. So I'm just kind of stirring it off of the sides of the tablespoon as best I can. I never get 100% of it off really, but I get pretty close. And then I'm going to stick my stir in there and kind of try to get it up off the bottom. I just want to, I don't want it just to be in a glob on the bottom. I want it somewhat incorporated throughout the whole jar of water. Alrighty, so now I'm going to put in my little sacket of worm castings. Um, and you know, just like you were brewing your own like cup of tea, you kind of, you know, do one of these um, just to get uh, the water totally seeping into all of the, the castings and kind of getting it super saturated. So now the last thing is you're gonna use your aerator. Uh, I have this plugged in already. Um, so as I stick it in, it will start to kind of bubble there we go. And voila, you have made your first batch of worm compost tea. So now that you've got your aerated worm tea bubbling away on your counter, let's talk about just some tips and tricks and how to use it. So one frequently asked question about using aerated worm tea is how long do you let it bubble and brew for? So in the normal like household temperature range, you know, mid 60s to mid 70s, you should let it bubble like this somewhere in your house for about a day. If the temperature is lower than that, maybe low 60s, high 50s, uh, let it go for another day or two, so maybe a total of two days. Well, you don't let it bubble for too long because, you know, think about it, these bacteria and nematodes and protozoa and fungi that we're trying to expand population numbers for are terrestrial organisms. So they live in soil, they live in compost, they're not aquatic life forms. Since they live in the soil, they can handle some amount of, you know, saturated conditions, like when it rains a lot, you know, and the soil is full of water. But if you let it bubble for too long, even if you're adding air to it with your aerator, they're gonna drown. So there's a there's a time limit so i always when i make it in my house i always just let it go for 24 hours and then i use it the only way it could go bad is if you aerate it for too long and the population peaks because it's eating all these sugars and like loving life and being great and then they run out of food because they ate all the sugars and then they're just still in water and they then they like drowned let's say i've been bubbling this for 24 hours what do i want to do with it once it's done well i have some finished aerated worm tea here that I poured into this measuring cup. You're going to want to dilute the aerated worm tea. So I've got about a cup um, in this measuring cup and I've got some more filtered water. Again, you could use rainwater. Uh, I just have filtered water. Still don't want to use chlorinated water. There's about a cup in here already. So I'm going to put another cup of water in it. So it's about two cups total. And that's what the, that's what it looks like uh, when I'm going to pour it onto my garden or my house plants or my fruit trees or whatever. So today I'm going to, I'm going to water this little guy, one of my house plants. Um, so I'm just going to pour a little bit on this plant. I probably won't use all two cups, but this plant will be happy and healthy and I can use the rest of this worm tea for my other house plants. You can't overuse worm tea uh, for your plants. Um, worm tea doesn't burn plants like some fertilizers do because we're just essentially just adding microbial life to 
the environment that your plants are growing in. Um, so really the sky's the limit as far as how often you wanna use worm tea. It probably is going to be limited by how often you wanna brew it and how quickly you can use it. Because like I said, it does have a shelf life simply because these are living things that need to be transferred from an aquatic environment to a terrestrial environment. Okay, so now you know why worm tea is a great addition to your garden management system. Now you know how to make it. Now you know what our recipe is here at the Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture. We did include the recipe in the description below. So if you wanna go down below and look at exactly the ratios, it's there. Please let us know how your worm tea experiments are going. What do you use your worm tea on? What are your ratios? What are your worm tea recipes? Thanks for joining us and I'll see you later.